Welcome back to the Organizational Excellence Podcast. This is Kevin Johnson of Leverage Consulting, and today we are going to talk about team culture. There's a lot of people, a lot of companies, a lot of individuals who really work hard on hiring people and bringing them into the practice. The interesting thing that I think a lot of people tend to see is that sometimes we don't put as much effort into after the fact. We don't put as much effort into the individual or the team once they're inside the building. So I've got a couple things for you to think about when it comes to your own business, your own team. And this doesn't matter if you're a doctor, a business owner, a manager, a team leader, or you are one of the team members, which technically everybody I've just listed is one of the team members. It's just sometimes some of those folks are viewed as being the ones that are responsible for creating culture when, in my view, everyone is responsible for creating team culture. One of the things that, or one of the ideas that some can actually use is, for example, team building events or team building exercises that can build into things. And sometimes I think we tend to overthink what that team building really means. Sometimes it might just be something like celebrating someone's engagement. It might be celebrating someone announcing the fact that they're pregnant. It could be announcing the fact that someone has just been promoted within their job. You know, so sometimes that team culture thing is just really, it's like anything that you can use or anything that you can do that helps the team see each other as individuals and human beings as opposed to them, those people, or just an inanimate object or the source of whatever their frustration may be. Interesting thing is, is when, when you have good team culture, when you have good teamwork, when we identify a problem, so for example, we have an issue with a mutual patient or a mutual customer or client, if we have a good team culture and a good team relationship, our first thought is not immediately what did they do to screw this up. It's not what went wrong and why did they screw this up. Our first thought is how do we make it right for the patient, the customer, the client? How do we get through a service recovery? When we have a poor culture, we tend to start looking at how we can hang this person out to dry. We start telling everyone else about how this other person screwed it up for the rest of us type thing, as opposed to I'm going to go directly to the individual and I'm going to help them see a different side to things, or I'm going to teach them how to avoid this again in the future. Again, how do we avoid having a poor team culture or how do we promote a great team culture or just promoting great teamwork, good relationships with inside your business. Well, one of which, again, is team building. Find opportunities within your team. Go in during your team meetings. Maybe you do something a little outside the box. It could be as simple as tell us one thing the rest of us don't know about you. And you go around the room. And there's always going to be a laugh. There's always going to be something interesting. I'll tell you another one that's going to be huge and might be problematic for some of you. But one of the biggest things that I'll see as a huge opportunity to create a better practice culture is when we have meetings, there are no cell phones, there are no smartwatches, there are no devices, there's no distraction allowed. Because if given the opportunity, people are going to gravitate towards that pacifier that they call a cell phone. They're going to gravitate towards looking at their watch every three seconds because they just got another buzz of some other update from social media, email, text message, or something. Leave it all outside the room. Let people communicate with one another. We communicate with people based off of what's said, how it's said, and body language. We can't see those things or interpret those things if we're paying attention to a device. And again, what's the big win with this? Why, why should anyone really even care about a team culture, practice culture? Well, first off, again, as I've mentioned in some of this, we work together better as a team. We actually are more interested in going to a human being and an individual and problem solving something and raising them up as opposed to tearing them down. The other big thing, which I think some tend to overlook, is the fact that this is a form of marketing. When your team feels like the rest of the team appreciates them, likes them, they fit in, we're happy. If we're happy, that becomes contagious with the rest of the team. If I'm happy, or if our team member's happy, then my customers are going to know it. My clients are going to know it. My patients are going to know it. 
there's a lot of reasons and count the number of customers that come through your business in a day. That's how many reasons you need to work on improving your practice culture. So that is your organizational excellence podcast for today. And next time I've got an even better topic.